Daniel He, Carite Noahide, The Struggle for Statehood 2. Now, states, states emerge at times, sovereign nations, countries, provinces as well, and divisions of counties and things, and territories emerge within countries. And from time to time, they do emerge new ones. And in recent decades, we've had, what is it, South Sudan, and uh, a few decades back, we had what was called Yugoslavia break up around the Balkans break up into what Croatia and Bosnia and a number of others, Herzegovina, I think, and a number of others. So new states emerge at times and old ones fade away. So the struggle of statehood must must sort of, in that sense, on planet Earth in this world, the struggle of statehood sometimes has to come to a point where it self-evaluates. Because, you know, it, it questions of one of the fundamental things which sort of what what formed it in the first place. In the United States, as, as an example, they have these founding fathers. These founding fathers founded the United States of America, the political country known as the United States of America. It was land before that, which was inhabited by Native Americans, what we tr often call the Indians because it was believed that was part of India in, in Asia, by the early, early people. But um, the Founding Fathers founded the United States on on ideals, and we see them in the, their constitutions and things. And um, we see now, uh, many uh, a couple of centuries later, a few centuries later, that some of it's starting to crumble a bit. Some of the early ideals... But that's probably universal, isn't it? As society's moved on, it's changed a lot. A lot of our values in the world now are very liberal on a lot of issues, and things are changing a lot. A lot. So a, a state, sort of, which was formed by a number of people with often a particular axe to grind a lot of the time, a lot of purpose and point they wanted to make with the world, and why they were forming this nation, Many years later now, a lot of people sort of, a lot of society in 2024 are saying, do we give a rat's ass about that old mentality anymore? In every nation out there, even in tightly held together ones like North Korea, where it's rather severe, there's probably dissidents, for want of a better word. So the struggle for statehood will, will usually have some self-evaluation going on at times and assessing whether... Is, is there a point to what we're doing? And what I'm arguing here is that when you start assessing whether there's a point, you might want to possibly consider is there, is there a point to going on into perpetuity, permanently, to enduring permanently as a state, over the long haul of eternity, as it were, forever, yes. So do, do you want this state that you are part of to endure into perpetuity on an ongoing permanent basis? Do you want it to live forever? I mean, we on planet Earth, the usual thing is we live, we, we're born, we live, we die. And we, I suppose, if we've got faith, a lot of us, we go off to the great beyond, the afterlife. That's usually the scenario which has been going on since the beginning, by the looks of it. So does it really matter when we're when we're dead and buried in six feet under? Does it really matter if rural Britannia is still around anymore? You had your piece of a pie. If the kids want to do something different, let them. So that's one of the struggles of statehood. Is it something you want really to be a permanent sort of thing? For an enduring legacy in a culture which goes on forever, carrying your name as it were, if you're a bit of a thing, or your ideals and values forever? Do you want to impart that to your offspring, to the world? Do you really want it to be a permanent thing, or is it just something as a state which has struggled to exist and fought wars in its name, which is just happy to be for a while and have its land and its homes and its society and well, we got what we wanted, so, you know, that'll do, I suppose. The next generation can make up their own mind. 
that's a real struggle for state of whether it's a thing which is a permanent thing or whether it's just a thing which is for your generations, which have perhaps now come and gone for somewhat for some of us. It's an interesting question. There's potentially a way, if, if you're a person of faith, and this this is Karat Noahide, so it's the rainbow covenant of the Bible, so normally people who are watching this are often faith people. If you've got faith in God, and you give a damn about this particular subject, I, I teach a lot of subjects, but if you give a damn about this particular subject, do you want your nation to last forever? And would you pray for it to last forever? Would you give a damn about praying for your nation to go on into perpetuity? Maybe you have a progeny plan, a dynasty plan for the kids to go on into perpetuity. Do you want the great Australian nation to go on always? You know, That's a struggle for stated whether it's a thing which will ultimately continue to be or one day run its final course. Interesting.